Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Gay From Scratch, and today we're talking about the Zenko game engine, or more specifically, the Starbreach demo that was just released for Zenko. Now, if you've been following this channel for some time, I've been following Zenko for a very long time, back to when it was called the Paradox Engine. And last year, it was released as an open source MIT licensed game engine. Uh, it's probably as close as you can get to an open source competitor to the Unity game engine. It uses a very similar workflow. You've got things like prefabs and ETS or ECS or entity component systems behind the scenes. And what you're seeing running right now is Starbreach. Now this originally started life as a demo for the Zenko game engine created for them for GDC 2016 or 2017 and this was to showcase the Zenko game engine and what they've done is they've cleaned up the source code and released it to the public under a mixed license. It's MIT license for the source code and then it's CC BY. We'll get back into that in a little bit but the assets are released under a CC BY uh, attribution license. So uh, what you can do basically is download this source code and really jump into it to learn how a Zenko game is made. Now you can see what I'm running right now. This is running on my i770 laptop, 16 gigs of RAM, a 1080 external GPU. Now it looks like it's a little bit jankier than it is because of the animation. It's actually running about 80 to 110 frames per second. And this really is a good demonstration of how a properly structured Zenko game can be created. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. First off, we'll get into a little bit of the details first. We'll, we'll go through where you can get Zenko, uh, what it's all about, and then we'll jump into the, the announcement for uh, this uh, Starbreach demo, where you can grab it, and then I'll jump into the Starbreach demo itself and kind of show you your way around, how to get started with it. So if you want to check out Zenko as an engine, and see what it's capable of, or if you just want to see how the Starbreach demo was created, now is the perfect opportunity. So hopefully by the end of this, you will understand all of those things. Um, so without further ado, let us jump in. Uh, first, we're going to take a look where you can get Zenko, what it's all about. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. I've already done some videos covering this subject, but a quick refresh, and then we'll jump into Starbreach itself. So first things first, here is Zenko itself. So Zenko is available at Zenko.com. Uh, it's, as I said, it's open source. It's got an installer that installs and maintains the most recent version, sort of like the uh, Unity Hub uses or the Epic Game Launcher, the same kind of concept. Um, Zenko 3.1 is the current version. It's unfortunately available for Windows only right now. I'm not gonna get into the features of it. Like I said, I have done some videos on Zenko already, so I will link those in the linked article down below. Coincidentally, the source code for Zenko is also available up on GitHub. Uh, you can go to github.com forward slash Zenko 3D forward slash Zenko. Again, I will link that as well. But if you're interested, it is very much under active development. So here you can see the last commit was 12 hours ago. So there are people working directly on making Zenko better and better. I also believe they have a patron fund out there for supporting Zenko's development. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the primary source code itself is under the MIT source code license, which is very liberal in what you can do with it. And in terms of platforms, it targets its Windows, UWP, which is Windows by a different name, uh, iOS and Android right now, I believe are the platforms. So um, here we're gonna head on over to the Zenko um, Starbridge demo announcement blog. You can see some details about it here. We mostly covered all of these things already, the license it's under and so on. And they're trying to get the community to kind of jump in, see what it's all about, build on it, add characters and so on. Now the, um, the details for this thing itself, it's available on their GitHub again, this time in the Star Starbreach repository. Uh, it is under those two licenses. As I mentioned earlier, you just kind of come in here uh, to Starbreach, go ahead and do a clone of the repository, and then you can open it up in the Zenko game engine. Speaking of which, here it is running in the Zenko game engine. Now, when you first load it, it may not look at all like this. And that's there's a good reason behind that. All of these different attributes of it, the, the different sub-levels that it's built out of. So we've opened up main scene, and the level for main scene contains all the other sub levels that put it together. So for example, uh, our starting point is here in platform one. So you start on this teleporter, we'll just go ahead and we'll jump on that. We'll take a look at it and there you go. So there is your starting point. Now this may not actually show up like this and that's because by default they will not be loaded. So you see here, if I click this guy, that area is gone and you're gonna find that for all of them. So if you wanna stream in or load in the different platformer level, click this little guy right here and hold down control and that will load it and all of its sub resources in. It's just to keep it so that if you're just working on a certain area of the level, the re resource intensiveness is down and you'll see that it actually is using streaming for all of these 
these different pieces that come in. So if you don't need part of the game engine open, so say example, I'm just working on the platform 1.1 stuff and I don't need platform 1.4, I can go ahead and hide that. And if we zoom out, the bits for platform 1.44 or 1.4 are now hidden. So it's kind of important to check things out that way. Now, if you want to learn what is going on here, you also notice it chugs quite a bit when you enable everything. Um, so I don't recommend you do that unless you just want to see everything all at once or if you've got a pretty beefy machine. Coincidentally, you can turn everything on by going to main scene and clicking that guy right there while holding down the control key. You can also get rid of everything all at the same time too. But again, I don't think I necessarily recommend that that because, well, it gets rid of everything. Uh, in terms of how things go and the way that the program is loading, what you'll notice is if you come to the root level of assets right here, you'll notice right here you have game settings. And game settings is where your top level settings and configurations are, what the renderer are, how your physics are going to be configured, how the editor is configured, and so on, your splash screen for your game. But what the key thing that you need to be aware of here is the default scene. This is how things kind of kick off. When your game launches, it creates an instance of main scene. So after that, you may be wondering, okay, well, how exactly does coding work? How do I add logic to my game and how is all that configured? Well, let's go back to our trusty character here. So you see this character, uh, you can select the character that way, or you can locate the character here under character like this, select the character. And then if you click the little um, locate button here, it will find it within the level like, like it has there. I was already found it and already zoomed in on it. But that is how you can um, quickly find where things are in the scene. And you'll notice that there are a number of oops entities attached to our character here. So our character is composed of uh, much different things. So you see, uh, you got crosshairs and you've got a camera and so on. But the character itself over here, you'll notice, is made up of a number of different components. So you see here, we got camera controller, uh, soldier controller, soldier animation, soldier weapon, uh, weapon fire feedback, player input. So we'll open that guy up as an example. And you'll see there are a bunch of configurations you can make here. So uh, keys down, you can add in. So the S key controls. The left key is the A key. So this is how you're setting up your WASD keys. But how are these actually bound back to code? Well, if you come down here, and if you want to jump in and really start exploring this guy, so go to the uh, source code section over here, you right click it, and basically say, open in IDE. This will load up in uh, either Visual Studio 2017 or 2019. And here is one of the examples. So here you've got your soldier player input. This is the uh, component we just looked at, or this, this script has been attached to the player character. And you'll notice there are a number of um, publicly exposed events like invert X axis, invert Y axis, the key lists. Um, that we were just looking at right there, dead zone and so on. So if we flip on back over here, you will see that with our player selected, uh, come on, right here. If we go here, those things invert the axes, the, the keys that are all being defined, the dead zone, everything that we just saw, those are being exposed to the engine. So these scripts are automatically run when the game runs. And that's what all of these things are. So the camera controller here, this script is also over here. So if we find that would be under, I think, player, uh, player control, character, soldier controller, or is it under, there's, there's a couple of different locations here, but basically here's your camera controller right there. So that camera controller, you'll see it is inherited from sync script and anything that is a sync script can be bound and attached on the other end. And then this is basically run as the game runs. So you'll come down here, you'll notice uh, it's got a start, an update, and so on. So these are called at various different parts in the game's life cycle. And this is how you basically attach your, your game logic to the objects and the entities that are in your world. And you just want to come through here. It's pretty straightforward, the structure you've got here. You've got a folder there for camera. You've got core things like pathfinding, state, streaming, uh, player spawning, and so on here under core. Uh, we've got drones, those robots we saw in the demo earlier on. This is all the logic that controls them. Uh, you'll notice here we've got things controlling gameplay elements such as laser fences and the pressure plates that we step on all the time. Um, we've got the things controlling the soldier that we saw earlier, some visual effects controls, and so on. So those are linked. If we come back here, if I wanted to add another script to our character, for example, I could come here and go add component. 
and then you'll see, and this jumps, this looks like a bit of a bug, but it jumps over here. We can go over to scripts and there you see every single one of the scripts that is exposed is available and can be attached here. So that's kind of how you add your logic and that's how things break down in the Zenko game engine. So when you're going through this demo, if you want to see how things are controlled, it's really that simple. Now, another cool thing with Zenko is you'll find that there's prefab support here. So we go back here, we'll go back into our assets and we'll look at the different folders here. We've got, um, for example, the drones. The drones are composed of, there's animations to go with the drones, so we can see them and we can come in here and we can preview those animations in action. Theory. Not sure why I'm not getting an animation. Here, I'll do that with the character instead. So the character, here, let's go character, animations. So here we got the character, we'll do the running animation. <laughs> okay, so it was loading really slowly. So you see, we've got uh, the running animation of our character. So you can preview these things in real time. Go back here, for example, we're back to the drone, but the drone is saved as a prefab. So here is the basic drone. And this, a prefab is almost like a level onto itself. So you can break logic down that way. Here you can see the drone loaded, give it a second. As it's blinking, this means it's still loading or evaluating or something is being built. So you look down here, you see building effects three in queue. So we'll let the build finish and then we'll, we'll take a look at this drone in a bit more detail. So two in queue. One in queue, okay, our, our drone is now loaded. So there you see it there. You can see the, the scene hierarchy that goes behind the drone. So the drone has uh, various different components attached to it. So it's got, it's a character, audio emitter, navigation. It's got a drone attached to it. Again, a drone is ultimately going to be uh, the script over here for, or if we go back up here and you find drones, there's a drone. So that's how that is attached to this prefab in our game world. And then below that, we've got uh, some model details, the animations that are attached to this guy. So the three different animation states for firing, idling, and moving. And this is how your drone is controlled in or created in the world. And then you instance these um, prefabs in your game world. So if we went back over here to your main scene, uh, you will find, I should be able to sit here and go drone. So these are the various different drones that are in each thing. So we'll go to platform 1.2. You'll see there are two drones in that platform and you see it's selecting them in the back, I think I can, there is a way to jump to it directly. There we go. So there you see, you just instance that prefab into the world and there they are. So that kind of gives you a bit of a heads up of how the relationships work. And this is a great way of jumping into a full blown project so you can see, uh, you know, how all of these pieces come together, how you bring your art in and you connect it to logic and so on. And then of course you can jump through and go through all of the source code that is attached back to it on the back end. So hopefully this very quick introduction will actually show you how you can get started with Starbreach. And it, it's a very um, cool example for sure. Um, it, again, when you first load it up, you're probably gonna, whoa, we got a bit of an input lag going on. All right, to infinity and beyond. Um, but again, it's gonna slow the hell down if you load everything up in the editor like I have. But like you can see, this is all of the game world that went together to create uh, that video or that, that um, gameplay footage that I caught earlier on. And I hope at least I've shown you enough of how the pieces go together so that you can at least start exploring. And it's actually really kind of cool. So if you wanted to, you just create your own little basic script and you can attach it to anything in the world and have it immediately um, start interacting and playing with it. And if you're interested, um, I actually, my old Paradox 3D tutorial series actually still shows you how these relationships work. It, it, it's, it's quite easy to get started with. And the workflow is quite nice, at least in my humble opinion. And this, this demo does do a very nice job of showcasing the capabilities of this engine. Um, is it, again, a direct peer to Unreal Engine or Unity? Maybe not quite yet, but my goodness, the, the basis is definitely here to make it that one day. And again, this option is 100% open source with a very real open source friendly license and the MIT license. So I still love to see a community really get behind Zenko and make it all that it could be. And it's a great option out there. And I think that the Starbreach demo is a good job of demonstrating what this thing is capable of, how the workflow works. And I don't know, I'm interested in hearing what your opinions are of it. After seeing this, do you have any interest in checking out Zenko or have you already checked out Zenko in the past and formed an opinion of it? I know probably the direct competitor to Zenko is, it's, 
well, obviously it's as a Unity alternative, but in the open source segment, it's going to come down to people either choosing Zenko or Godot, and I can really get that. And I can honestly see merits for both. Um, so it's great. You know what? More choices are an excellent thing, especially in the free and open source world. So I hope both game engines, nothing but the best of luck. But let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.